Hello, and welcome to this video on designing and editing GDS files. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to implement the basic shapes in a GDS file. We're picking up at the end of the last video where we've already set up a basic layout in K-Layout. In this case, we've set up a single cell, cell 1 on this side, and a layer, layer 1, over here. What we're going to be working on this lesson is implementing the basic shapes in a design. So everything in the middle here is where we're going to be mostly working. We're going to be using the top few buttons here in K layout, implementing polygons and boxes. We'll start with the first one, a box. So when I select that, I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit here. And all I have to do is click to define the first corner. Oh, and of course, I forgot the most important thing, which is selecting a layer. We created this layer, but until we actually highlight it here, we're not drawing in that layer. So select a layer, select the box tool, and now I can begin drawing. I'm going to click once to define the top left corner and drag to define the other corner. When I click again, I've created a box. If you look carefully when I do this, you'll notice that the box is actually snapping in this case. It won't let me draw uh, beyond these grid cells. That's because I have a grid set up, a snap grid set up already. To edit this, we can go to the Edit, Editor Options. And here I can see the grid. It's currently set to 1 micron. So everything that I draw is going to be snapped to a 1 micron grid. For now, I'm going to leave that as is, but if you want to make it larger or smaller, you can do that. What I would recommend is that the smallest you should ever set it is the design grid of the lithography tool you're going to be using. If your tool cannot expose to anything less than 100 nanometers, you shouldn't set that any lower than 100 nanometers. One micron is good for this case. Okay, so this is the box. We can click one corner, click the other corner to define the box. Uh, we're still on box mode right now, so you can see it's still selected. The one thing that I warn you of with the snapping grid here is if you're too zoomed in, let's go ahead and zoom in down here, if I click and I drag, if we zoom in even more, you see it has to go a certain distance before that box will appear. So sometimes if you're too zoomed in and you click twice, you'll accidentally create kind of an infinitely small box here. What I'm going to do is go to select mode, so at the top here I'm selecting select, and if I click and drag a box around this, it's highlighting that single infinitesimally small box there with a little black dot. To show you what selecting does on a normal box, I'm going to click and drag around all three, and you can see it gets this dark outline with the black dots at the corners. These small boxes, um, I usually like to get rid of them because they can actually interfere with the bounding box, the kind of the extents of your pattern in the lithography tool. So I, I want to avoid any of those. One way to check if you have anything like that is to tell the, the software to zoom to fit in your tire pattern. So if we go to display here and zoom fit, we can see it's not quite lining up with the edge of this lower box here. So the reason is because there's still that tiny box at the bottom. So if I go ahead and select it and delete, I just click the delete key to delete. Delete is also available in the edit and delete menu there. So if I delete it, and I again go back to display and zoom fit, you can see it zooms in. So the bottom here is really right at the bottom of, the, of the, this viewing window. We're only getting the shapes that we expect to see. Uh, that's a great way to check if you've got any of those kind of erroneous tiny boxes around. All right, so we've kind of looked at the box. Lastly, if we want to edit a box after we've drawn it, we can go into select mode again and double click the box. This is going to open up this box properties window where we can define the lower left and upper right corners. Or we can go to the center and size version of this, which lets us select the center and the size. So here you can type in any value you want, and it will ignore the grid. So if I make this 4.5, it doesn't care about that. It's only for drawing that it's going to be snapping to the grid. So pay attention to that when you are changing those dimensions. Uh, this The center feature is really useful for centering your patterns. We can set it to 0, 0 to make things symmetric around the origin of our pattern. I highly recommend you pay attention to those um, coordinates when you're designing your pattern. It's going to help you later on to not have things at 1.7632 microns, but instead just at 1 micron. Unless your, your widths call for that, there's no reason to have that many digits. It's just going to make it harder later on. Okay, so that's everything for the box. Um, oh, I guess we can talk about partial at this point as well. If we want to edit our box, we can click partial, and if we click, we can move the box around uh, to change its dimensions kind of graphically. 
you can notice here this is also snapping and it's kind of snapping in a weird way and it's because I have another thing set in, in editor let's go back to edit editor options real quick so edit editor options and I have movements here set to diagonal that's only going to let me move the edges of the box in the diagonal direction that's why I was kind of moving weirdly so I'm going to set that to any direction and click OK and we'll click partial again and yeah now I can kind of move it wherever I want so that's what I would recommend in this case but there might be a reason you'd want to use a diagonal in some situations okay once we've got a box the next thing would be to look at is polygon polygon lets you create a polygon with arbitrary sides an arbitrary number of sides and an arbitrary shape so with this one I'm clicking to define the first point and then you can see I can draw the next point wherever I want and I can keep clicking to define as many as I want uh, I can intersect them as well make really weird things and at the end when I'm ready to close it if I double click it closes the shape and so here I kind of did this zigzaggy and I ended up with three kind of smaller polygons as a result again I can move these around with partial so I click partial I'm going to select this corner here and we're going to open this back up to kind of a more normal shape just like the box instead of partial I can I can click select and double click on it to open up and it'll show me the exact coordinates of all the points um, inside the polygon and I can just go ahead and edit these with uh, mouse and keyboard however I like oops and when I actually apply and OK it implements the change uh, in the polygon nice easy straightforward you can make as many as you want and again to close it just double click and it'll close the polygon the next shape we're going to look at is path path uh, lets us create lines and we can make complicated shapes with those lines when we click path it's going to immediately open up this window that uh, asks us for the width I'm going to set the width here to two microns click OK zoom out a little bit give myself a little more space and now when I click and drag I'm creating uh, a path with that width that I entered again I'm going to double click to stop it and we've created this path uh, with these four points here again I'm going to go back and select this one to see what options are available to me so I click select and I double click and I can again see the points I can modify the width after the facts and at the bottom down here we can select the end of our poly of our path and so if I select that I can change it to uh, square or round or variable so let's just select the uh, extension type to see let's set round and when I click apply you can see just off to the side here it's gone from that flush end of the path to a rounded path let me move this over and I can see you can see as I change it so I'll go back to flush which is the default and it's flat at the end there's nothing sticking out past that last point that we drew uh, whichever one is most suitable for your application you can go through and try square is just going to leave a square end on it whatever works for you again this one is also editable editable with the partial uh, function all right, so now that we've actually seen the basic shapes themselves, we're going to look at the combination mode. This says how the polygons that we draw interact with polygons that are already present in the layout. So let's go ahead and set that. Right now it's on add. What that means is if I take a new box and I draw it over these other boxes, it just creates a, a third box that does not actually connect with these older boxes. They're all separate uh, boxes. I can click on each individual one to select it individually. Let's delete that one that we just added. So I've selected it and I'm clicking delete. I should mention if you want to go, if I have box selected and I want to stop drawing boxes, I've been clicking select or just hitting the escape key on my keyboard. Escape is canceling the mode that you're in, which takes you back to the default mode, which in this case is select. So we've turned off box. Now I'm going to try merge. When I select box and draw a new box here that overlaps the other boxes, they're going to merge together into a single box. So now they are a single polygon at this point. They're no longer a box. So when I select it, it's all one big shape. The, the, the merge mode has fused them all together. I'm going to undo that to remove that box. Let's go through the last few here. Erase. This is going to subtract whatever we're drawing with the new shape. So I've just cut out or removed whatever I drew mask is going to take the intersection of the two boxes so only where they overlap is does anything remain and lastly is the difference function so here this is going to remove wherever they're overlapping but keep everything else 
So again, it drew the new box, but removed where it overlapped with the previous box. Different functions for different applications. I would recommend you leave it an add to start, but if you realize that you need to kind of take a difference or something like that, definitely those other options are nice. Uh, as the final thing to check out here, I want to see how those combination modes uh, work with the when we have a new layer. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. So again, just like in the, uh, before, we're going to edit, layer, and then new layer to add a new layer. We're going to make it layer 2, and we're going to add a name here of oxide. The name is totally up to you. In this case, I'm trying to replicate what we would have in a process. Maybe we're doing an oxide step here, so we would have an oxide layer. When I click OK, it's populating it on the right-hand side here with the layers. When I select one, when I select layer two, and I go to draw a new box, you can see it's a different color. It's kind of this purpley color. And I've just had on add mode, so it's just drawn another uh, box just like we would expect if it was in layer one. If I switch it to merge and draw that over both this box in layer two and the one in layer one, and click connect or select, you'll see that the ones in the same layer merge together, but it does not merge with the previous box. Again, over here, just to show you again, not merging. So that's a nice, that's a one reason you might want to use layers with this mode. You can kind of separate out those different effects uh, and really get exactly what you want from your pattern with this combination mode. All right, so that's the basic shapes in K layout and how we can add them to our GDS file.